so obviously a lot has changed over the last 2000 years. One thing that hasn't changed since the time of Zeno, or Seneca, or Epictetus, or Marcus Aurelius is people, as human nature. There were annoying people then, there are annoying people now, and that's what we're going to talk about in today's episode. Stoic strategies for dealing with people, particularly difficult, frustrating, obnoxious, and annoying people. Some psychopath near where I live decided that my road was a good place for them to dump two dead dogs and two dead goats. Maybe they couldn't afford to dump it, maybe they were doing something highly illegal. I don't have time to think about it. That's one of the things in meditations Marcus talks about. He says, don't delve too much into what lies underneath. What are you going to do about it? Every time I drive by it, I'm complicit in it. After a certain point, by allowing it to continue. The other thing I'm going to do is one of the most powerful things in meditations. He says, the best revenge is to not be like that. And then, in another passage of meditations, Mark says, be careful not to treat human beings the way that inhumanity treats human beings. The point is, don't be changed by the shittiness, the cruelty, the arbitrariness, the selfishness of other people. But I can decide not to be implicated in it. I can decide not to be changed by it for the worst. But most of all, I can choose not to be the kind of person that drives by it over and over and over again and just lets it stand, which is what I'm doing today. Famous quote from Marcus Aurelius, the impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. And funny, it's actually in Book 5 of Meditations what Marcus really is talking about is people. He says, in a sense, people are our proper occupation. Our job is to do them good and put up with them. But when they obstruct our proper tasks, they become irrelevant to us, like sun and wind and animals. He says, our actions may be impeded by them, but there can be no impeding our intentions or our dispositions, because we can accommodate and adapt. The mind adapts and converts to its own purposes the obstacle to our acting. The impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. So when he's saying, the obstacle is the way, he's specifically talking about difficult people. He's saying that people are an opportunity to practice virtue. Difficult people, most of all. What these people are is a chance for you to try to do things differently. I think it's a wonderful phrase that people are our proper occupation. We are put here for each other. We are social, political animals, as the ancients would say, and our job is to figure out how to work with people, to get things out of them, to not be corrupted by them, to not be broken by them, to not let them turn us into or sons of naught. To let them change us in a negative way. But actually, when we deal with difficult, frustrating, annoying, or obnoxious people, as Marcus Aurelius starts Book 2 of Meditations lamenting all the things that people are going to do, people are there for us to present us opportunities to grow and change and learn and do good for them and the world. Five rules from the Stoics that will help you handle rude and difficult people in your life. Number 1. First and foremost, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Marcus says, you have to recognize in the wrongdoer a nature similar to your own. They are us. We are them. Number 2. Accept that rude people are a part of life. They are inescapable. Wake up in the morning and tell yourself, I'm going to see rude people. I'm going to see idiots. I'm going to see selfish people. It's a fact of life. You can't go around being surprised when you see something you knew you were going to see. Number 3. The best revenge, to the Stoics, is living well. Marcus Aurelius says, the way you get even is by not being like that. 
Number 4. Try to be indifferent. We want to live a good life. Marcus Aurelius says, and then be indifferent to what makes no difference. If other people suck, if other people get away with being awful, is that going to change us? Is that going to make us want to be different? No, it doesn't matter. Number 5. Zoom way, way, way out. When you see things from a distance, out of an airplane window, it becomes so much smaller. You don't take these people so seriously. And then you move on and you focus on what's up to you. People suck. It's just a fact. And one of the fascinating things about Marcus's meditations is how often he returns to this very theme. He opens the book with a catalog of the kind of people you're going to meet in the day, frustrating people, jealous people, stupid people, dishonest people, aggressive people. It's just a fact. Even his famous passage about how the obstacle is the way, the impediment to action advances action, you know what he's talking about. He's talking about difficult people. He's not saying you write them off. He's not saying you cut them out. He's not saying you give up on humanity. He's saying, saying that difficult people are an opportunity to be kind, to be patient, to be good, to get the most out of them. The obstacle is the way. Even is about this very idea. Difficult people exist and we have to put up with them and figure out a way to work with them. And we have to rise to the occasion of the people that we interact with. Marcus Aurelius was a guy who met his fair share of jerks. But he said, you know what you're supposed to do when you meet a jerk? You say to yourself, is a world without shamelessness, without jerks possible? He says, no. Then this is one of those people. They are playing that role. And when you can start to see people, even the frustrating, annoying, obnoxious people that you meet in your life, as playing a role assigned to them, a role that someone has to do, that there is no version of the earth where there are not annoying, obnoxious, awful people, right? Then you can accept them. You can tolerate them. You can also understand, right, that they are in a minority. It was inevitable that eventually you would bump up against one of these people. And now you have. And it's no more and no less than that. Thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video, a longtime supporter of the Zen Wisdom Wave. And I think what they do is important in relation to Stoicism. Because there's this image, this stereotype of the invulnerable Stoic, the person who never needs help, who never asks for help. This is something the Stoics themselves very explicitly push back on in meditations. Marcus Aurelius talks about how we're like soldiers storming a wall. We have to ask a comrade for help, he says. So what if you need help? If you want to talk to someone, so what? In fact, I think it's a positive good. I think it's something you should do. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service, and it's totally online. I do my therapy online for that reason. It's hard enough to find time to spend an hour with someone talking about your stuff. To add a drive and traffic and getting there early and getting back, it's just a giant pain. It's better to do it remotely. Marcus Aurelius's reminder is a life-changing one. He says you don't need to have an opinion about this. He says you always have the power of having no opinion. If it's pointless gossip, if it's trivia, if it's something that doesn't concern you, if it's something you have zero control or influence over, just let it be. Don't have an opinion. You don't have to say it's positive or negative. Epictetus says it's not things that upset us, it's our opinions about those things, it's our judgment about those things. So we have the power to not think about it, to tune it out, to focus on what really matters, to try to put our energy and our intention on where we can make a difference, 
on where we do have control. And if other people want to be concerned with them, if other people want to be riled up or have opinions about them, if it's their job to do it, leave it to them. Meanwhile, you let it float on by like the clouds, and you stick with what's up to you. In Book 11 of Meditations, Marcus Aurelius talks about something that must have been very common for him, which is that people didn't like him. People cursed him, they criticized him, they questioned his integrity, his commitment, all these things. So in Book 1113, he says, someone despises me, that's their problem, mine, he says. Not to do or say anything despicable, he says. Someone hates me, their problem, he says, mine. And this is the prescription of STO, he says, mine is to be patient and cheerful with everyone, including them, ready to show them their mistake, not spitefully or to show off my own self-control, but in an honest, upright way, that's what we should be like inside, he says. And never let the gods catch us feeling anger or resentment. I just think that's a beautiful kind of jiu-jitsu of it is, like, look, if someone doesn't like you, that's their problem, that's something they're carrying around, it doesn't affect you, if you didn't know about it, you wouldn't think about it at all. And the important thing is you don't let it change you, you don't let it affect you, don't let it make you like them. You just lock on to what you have to do, and you try to be patient and kind, you try to think better and do better for other. People then in fact they might ever even think of doing for you. If you do anything that matters, people will have really strong opinions about you, that's just like a fact of life. If you don't like that, don't do anything. And we can imagine that people had strong opinions about Marcus Aurelius and Seneca and Epictetus, anyone that's ever put themselves out there in the realm of ideas or in the arena of life, people have criticized. You have to be able to tune that out. Marcus says we love ourselves more than other people, yet for some reason, we care about their opinions more than their own. I'll get criticized for my books, the person will be like, oh, he did X, Y, and Z, as a criticism, but it's like, that's exactly what I was trying to do, and you realize, oh, not only is this person's opinion not worth listening to, if you heard it properly, you'd see that they were actually complimenting you. So, you have to be able to tune out what other people say and do, you have to focus on what you do, that's what the Stoics say, to develop kind of an inner scorecard, where you understand what you are trying to do, how you judge or measure your success. And it can't have anything to do with critics, with doubters, with haters, with your parents, with your spouse. It has to be based on your own understanding of what you're trying to do, of who you're trying to be as a person, that's what matters, and that's what you measure yourself by. One of the things we have to strive for as Stoics is to have better boundaries. Stoics talk about being self-contained, about not being rattled by what's happening outside, of managing your own crap, of controlling the inner citadel, your own soul, not vomiting your stuff onto other people, that's part of it, but also not allowing other people to vomit all over you, their problems, their issues, their lack of self-control, the things they want from you, you have to sort of keep up some defenses. You also have to be strong enough, confident enough, self-controlled enough, polite enough, to say, I don't really want to do that, I'm not comfortable with that, I don't like that, I'm not okay with that, here's what I am willing to do instead. To me, boundaries are really about being a responsible, mature, communicative adult who sets the rules of engagement for your own life, for your interactions with other people, and if you can't do that, as they say, a country without borders is not a country, a person without boundaries isn't a person. Marcus Aurelius reminds us to meditate often on the interconnectedness of everything in the world. 
He talks about at night when you see the stars, he says, imagine yourself running alongside them, imagine yourself up there. Whenever I watch a sunset, whenever I people watch, whenever I look at some beautiful piece of scenery, I try to think about humanity as one giant whole. I try to think about all the generations that have ever lived, all the ones that will ever come, and I try to remind myself that we're all connected, we're all part of this, we're all one enormous organism, as the Stoics try to remind us. What's bad for that organism is bad for us, we're all connected, we're all part of this, we all share this now. Try to never forget that. I hope you like this video, I hope you subscribe. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope these insights help you navigate your relationships with more peace and understanding, embracing the stoic virtues of wisdom and emotional resilience. Thank you for being a part of the Zen Wisdom Wave community. Together, we learn, we grow, and we find our path to inner peace. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.